Oh. Okay, good evening. A little after 6 p.m. Monday, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, on yesterday, we, uh, we we got started with a question or, or statement that Evelyn made talking about uh, uh, her awareness of her body and uh, as as opposed to her consciousness. And uh, that that sort of took us in a, in a direction that, uh, that we look at uh, the fact that we are consciousness and energy. And Pastor said a few things on that, and that sort of got the ball rolling in that direction. Uh, so I did not take a whole lot of notes on that. If there, are there any questions about anything that was said on yesterday or uh, anything else that, that may be interesting to you? Anyone? Okay. Um, I have a question, and and uh, this is uh, something that I have observed with me. If I'm in a situation or someone calls me or whatever, I see it, an event that happens or, or something that touches me, and I want to pray about it, uh, I, I still think I'm sort of in, in prayer in the mindset of Christianity. I'm at that place where I'm, 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 I'm not as comfortable uh, as I think I should be, and I feel more comfortable in that familiar place. Does anybody else feel that way? Or, or is it just me? Or do you even know what I'm talking about? But uh, that's, that's just a question I had. I, 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 I don't, I, I think we are uh, understanding prayer a little differently now. And uh, I find that it's not as easy uh, when I'm feeling something strong or feeling something emotional to, to move to that mindset. And uh I hope I hope that even makes sense to you. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good well, evening. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'll yield. Oh, I, I'm sorry. This is Teresa. I, I just want to share, Ron. I I, I look at it in a different way because I have okay. like ex employees reach out to me saying, "Can you please keep my family in prayer? Mm -hmm. um, we're going through." either death, bereavement, um, work challenges, um, everything under the sun. And so for me, I say, I got you. And so that's kind of how I deal with praying for others because of the fact that I know who I am and they're reaching out to me because they need that healing and I'm there when they need to talk. So that's kind of how I share when it comes to prayer. Okay. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, no, I, I was just going to piggyback off of Teresa. I think that in terms of when we think of prayer, you know, we're coming into, you know, a spiritual enlightenment in terms of realizing when we talk about meditation, sometimes people can ask us to pray for them. And immediately, sometimes we just want to go into, you know, the thoughts of what we think prayer is from a um, traditional way. But I think in our continuous, you know, spiritual enlightenment, I think about meditation. You know what I mean? Not to the point to get into any long conversations or in terms of a long prayer, but just as um, um, I, I apologize, just as Teresa said, is like, I got you. Now, in that aspect, when we say I got you, we know that in our spiritual perspective, you know, it's like we will, you know, maybe audibly or we may to ourselves say an internal prayer. But I think, again, it's being in a position where we can think about it, you know, uh, Ron, in terms of when I say meditation, 
Now, now prayer and, and meditation is really the same uh, thought from a standpoint in terms of it means the same thing, but like we, you know, we do it differently. And so I'm coming more into awareness now that I can appreciate that, like you say, you know, I got you. And sometimes it may be through sending something to them if that relationship is one that you're able to, you know, go into a more uh, deeper way of praying. But at the same time, I, I think that for me, when I think about praying for someone, is not just, again, uh, saying words, but it's like meditating to pray for whatever that need may be. So again, as I say before, prayer meditation is the same thing. And, um, you know, I just wanted to share those thoughts. Let, let, let me let, let, let me put another parameter around it and see if this makes sense to re-saying, George. And I, and I agree with what you guys said. I appreciate it as well. Uh, I noticed that if I if I'm, my feelings are strong or I'm, I'm emotional about something and, and I see something or someone needs prayer, uh, when we when I pray, there's a familiar place that I go into me. And I, I think when I'm feeling emotional about it, it's easier to slip back into that space if that makes sense to you. And, and that's, that is when I, that's when I, I kind of caught myself and said, say, okay, relax. Is this where you want to be? This is, this is, you know, this, this is, uh, I don't want to be in the Christian mindset. I don't want to be in that space where I've always been, although I'm not reciting words now, I, I want to be in a different place. And, and mindset is the only thing I could think of to kind of make that distinction. But it, it may be, you know, it may be a personal thing. May, maybe, maybe uh, just something I gotta gotta grow through. Well, Ron, what I would like to share is that we all intercede differently for yeah. individuals. You come from it from a teaching aspect, and Pastor just say we all are teachers. We just deliver our messages differently. But with that being said, when we are called, we have to adhere, and we have to be there for our brothers at the end of the day. And so I do my, my healing or, or sharing for someone when they ask for prayer differently than you teachers, if that makes sense. Just sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Anyone else? Would you make sure your phones are muted, please? Um, what I'm hearing, or what I heard, I think anyway, is that when we are so accustomed uh, to um, the energy of uh, religion, Christianity, until um, we have to make a conscious effort to um, not use the same energy to pray. And what I mean by that is this. How many times have you um, prayed in the name of Jesus and nothing happened, nothing changed? Have you guys ever experienced that? Yes, yeah. numerous times. Yes, Thank sir. You. So when um, when I learned it better, and it was some years ago when we first talked about prayer meaning to meditate. Um, I Even before that, I, I don't remember the last time that I um, got on my knees to pray. Uh, do I bow in reverence? Yes, I do. But I don't have to physically bow 
And then something else I learned. I don't want to be the one who's praying. I desire to be prayer itself. Meditation itself, which means that my desire is to live in a constant state of meditation. When I say, I got you, or I got this, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm not getting on my knees after that. What I envision when I say that is whatever the circumstance is, it's like I can see it in my solar plexus and I embrace it there. And I get results. And the reason I believe I do is because my desire was and always have been to understand spirituality beyond Christianity. And when I say always have, I'm talking about since we started this journey. One of the things about meditation is that We feel like we can't meditate unless we do it according to the rules of being in a quiet space, closing your eyes, and letting everything flow through you. You can do that, and it works. But suppose that you are not in a place to do it. Suppose the environment is not conducive for you to do that. And that's how I um, actually learned to say, I got you. Now, if someone calls me and says, I want you to pray with me now, then I audibly pray with them. Because I firmly believe that you have to meet people where they are. And if we don't, then are we really serious about changing the hearts of people? If you tell someone, oh, I can't pray for you. Uh, Jesus said, when you pray, go in your closet. So that turn, that would turn me off. I wouldn't want to have anything else to do with you when it came to prayer. So uh, I audibly pray with them. However, I know that that audible prayer for them is different than what I am experiencing on their behalf. I've, I have anointed people with oil and it worked. The oil had no power in it whatsoever. It worked because of my deep-seated desire for it to work. That's the same thing about audibly praying for somebody if they ask you to pray for them. You know what your intention is on their behalf. Now, if they simply say to me, um, I want you to pray for my family and me, or I want you to pray for blah, 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 I say, okay, I got you, and I, and I move on. And so, it is possible to, I'm sorry. It is possible to live in a state, a, a constant state of meditation. And what I found is when I am in a, because I am in a constant state of meditation, I am not as volatile as I once was. And I don't get upset as I once did. If it if if um the energy that you that you experience when you're upset, if I feel that I immediately shift. 
suppose for a moment that every one of us lived in a state of meditation. I'm not talking about just saying the words. I'm talking about living in a state of meditation where you are able to say as um, but Teresa said, I got you. How, uh, how much change would we experience? And how much, uh, how, how much volatility will we be free from? So I, I believe that this is a, a discussion we need to have, even though we've talked about it before. Or I think that um, is necessary but, um, on the edge of being imperative. Because I sense that some people who are on these calls get are uh, uneasy or they are not sure about wh what meditation is a means because they have not done it before. And again, I repeat, if you meditate simply by, by being alone, if you meditate, you know, with your eyes closed or with a candle, if you meditate that way, it's fine. When I am alone, when I when I am alone, I don't feel like, and I'm and I'm not really spoken about this before. I don't feel like I'm meditating at all. I feel the energy. the presence of the ancestors. And I'm not spoken about that a, a lot at all, if at all. The, the energy is different for me than it is when I say, I got you. Quite frankly, once I say that, as I said earlier, I can feel it in my solar plex. And that's the end of it. Because at that point, it is, it is in tune with my soul. And I don't have to speak directly to whatever it is in terms of verbalizing it. I don't have to go in a corner and, and uh, do that. It's instantaneous. And once I feel it, I just do whatever I'm doing. I'll continue doing what I was doing. So I guess this, the, um, the main thing is this, realizing that when you are meditating, um, your desire, if your desire has been stated within you about being in meditation with uh, the universe, then it goes beyond what we were taught as prayer. Now, I believe wholeheartedly that our four parents, mama, daddy, sister, brother, grandmama, all those, they prayed audibly, but they also prayed silently. And they got results. Because they truly believed what they were teaching us. 
I, I share the story with you that when I was a little boy, um, my Uncle Ben and Martha didn't live that far from us. And about two o'clock in the morning, my grandmama woke me up along with one of my aunts and said, go see about Benny. Um, Martha's dead. When we got back, I asked her, how did she know? She said, she appeared at my window. Now, before my grandmama went to bed, she was on her knees. So where did the other come from? I think that it came from a deeper place than we have ever experienced as church folks. Because if you really think about it, the energy and essence of the church changed dramatically from what it was when we were kids. The older people there connected in a different way. And we saw results. But we got so caught up in our intellect and academia until we only looked at the words that were being uttered. And our foreparents were experiencing something that we have begun to experience now. Now, do I think that we were wrong? I don't think we were wrong in the sense of being maliciously wrong. But I do think that we do not have a clearer understanding. It was the sincere desire that held us together as a family, as a people, when our four parents uh, were offering intercession for us. I believe that with everything in me. I also believe that the creator made a decision that we needed to open the eyes of humanity. And as a result of that decision having been made, we started questioning everything. We were not getting answers. And all of us were in different places, but we were asking questions without getting answers. Did where the where our four parents were, did it change from where we are now? No, the same energy is there. The difference is that the creator wanted a generation to look at what's written and see it, see the spiritual message in it rather than seeing it as a historical story. And by virtue of our doing that, if we get out of our way, we will have those experiences that our foreparents had, even though they were on their knees I don't want the Jesus that white people have. That's just not my Jesus, because they can kill, they can lynch somebody and go back to church. I heard that more times than I can count. They don't know anything about God, but they told you about God. The one that you call God is simply because you speak the English language, and that's what God is called. But the one that you are connected with is not the God of Christianity. It is the God who protected us as we were stolen and brought across the seas. It's the God who uh, protects us to this day and protected us when we were young and crazy. That's the same entity that our foreparents were dealing with and was connected with. 
or soliciting. So I, I say all of this to say, when Jesus said, when you, when you pray or when you meditate, go in your closet. Uh, Jesus also said that we are not to pray by the multiplication of words. He said that the um, Jesus said that that the um, Gentiles do that, or the hypocrites, and the Gentiles do that. So, what I'm saying is. It's what's in your heart that counts. Not just for yourself. It is in your heart that what's in your heart that counts. Even though they, they, we were being told, I would not have his Jesus. I don't believe in a white man's God, that kind of thing. Our parents still loved them. You can't hate anybody we were taught. Regardless of what they do, you can't hate them. That's what we were taught. That is still true to this day, and that is what we're doing to them right now. So um, when I say it's in your heart what counts, right now, if um, one of you said, I need you, to pray for me. And I can sit here and pray audibly for you because it's just like that oil. It is something that's tangible to you. And the touchstone is what it helps you to internalize and, and to um, have the confidence in a room in the Father that I have in the Father. And with that confidence that you have, that's what changes things. Does that make sense? So I am very somber. When, it, when someone asks me to um, pray for them or tell me a circumstance that they're dealing with. Because I want to feel what they are feeling. And the reason I want to is because if I can move the pain out of the way, then they're able to see more clearly as to how to deal with that situation or circumstance. And if not, circumstance doesn't even move. When the pain of it has been taken away, you can deal with it, you can endure it much better than you could be when you felt like you were there alone. I believe all of this I'm saying because also there is no way that we could verbally pray for all of the chaos that we are experiencing in this society. But we can connect with it through meditation. Even with the words that we were praying, there were people and there still are people who come to the altar every Sunday morning for the same thing. When I first got an inkling about some of the stuff that led me to where, where I am today, one of the churches I pastored this person was a drug addict. 
And that person came to me one Sunday morning and asked me to pray for him. And I did. And when he got up and came the next time, I told him, don't come back. You don't have to. God heard you the first time. You go be fine. And to this day, he does not do drugs. Why did that happen? Because I believed, sincerely believed that praying for him was going to change his circumstance. I did not know <clears throat> the internal meanings or understandings I didn't have yet of what I'm talking about of being in a constant state of meditation. I did not have it. But proof of something happening was shown through what happened with him afterward. So why did the creator honor those verbal words? Be because of my sincerity. I've been told all my life, don't ask anyone to do anything that you would not do. If you don't believe something, don't try to teach it to anyone else. Whatever you believe, be willing to die for it. That's where I believe we are, at a place where we're not asking anyone to do anything or to believe anything that we won't do or that we don't believe. That is the reason we are seeing the shift or experiencing the shift that we are experiencing. I do not believe that that um, we are in a tunnel anymore or seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. I don't believe that anymore. I believe that we are, we, we're not seeing that flicker of light. We see the light. We're at the edge of the tunnel. We're on the precipice of stepping into that light. What gets us there is dedication and sincerity. I'm done. Unless there are questions or comments, I, I hope that you understand uh, what I'm trying to express to you. Questions? <clears throat> well, not so much a question. Uh, whoever was talking can go ahead. Thank you, George. Pastor, I have a question about what you were describing of staying in a meditative state. Mm -hmm. When our parents would say things like, I'm praying on that, or stay prayed up, with those terms, when they use those terms, do you think they had an inkling about, it was that an example of them being in a meditative state or staying in a meditative state without even realizing what they were saying? Or, or what did those terms that, came from the church mean? Is it describing, do you think they were experiencing what you're talking about now, or were those just words they were using to say, I'm just praying about this? That was their explanation for what I'm talking about, the experience that we're having now. That was those words. Because um, when we well, let me just leave it at that. That was those words that they were saying, was describing what we are talking about now. And I do believe that because we were so deeply involved in the church and was so close to the to our parents and, and what they and grandparents and and, and the people, the older people in the community, these were we are what were called prayer warriors. The folk who call themselves prayer warriors today, they're just church folk who don't know what they're talking about. It's totally different. I believe they were describing 
as best they could what they were experiencing. Yes. And that's where we are now. We have not, we are not doing anything new. We just are able to look into the scriptures and put it all together in a different way. Does that make sense, Kathy? Yes, it does. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions about that before uh, we go to George? George. Oh, uh, good. Hey, good evening. Um, just one of the things I I want to bring in about prayer. As as George the individual, sometimes George don't need no prayer. So with me, I got to know when I need to seek prayer. And I also got to know when I'm on the reciprocal end of someone coming to me, do I need to give that individual prayer? And I just believe in giving people what they want at that particular time. So in some cases with me, prayer is not needed. George, it, it may be please something. Say something. George, please let me let me interject what? something here, please. You, when you feel like that you don't need prayer, it doesn't mean that you're not getting it. It is impossible for us to intercede on behalf of humanity and leave you out because you feel like you don't need it. I, um, I have never felt like I didn't need prayer. I never felt like that. I I still need it, whether it's someone who doesn't understand the meditative part, portions of it and doing it um, uh, uh, audibly. I, I need it. Why? It takes strength. It takes the power to... Um, to persevere in the face of adversity. And I believe with everything in me that even when I said that the church has nothing to offer me when I was in school and I was uh, in philosophy and I was studying all this other stuff, I believe that the prayers that were being offered up for me is what helped me get through and help and what kept me alive. I remember one day, and I'm coming back to you, George. I remember one day I had come from my uh, philosophy class and we were there in the apartment and we always debated and talked about stuff. And they were debating whether or not, would you mute your phone, please? They were, they were debating whether or not um, the Bible contradicted itself or were God real. And I was going through that period when I'm, I'm saying that the church has nothing to offer me. But when I realized anything, I was defending the reality of a God and I was defending the scriptures that they are not contradictory. Where that came from, I don't know, because it certainly wasn't in my mind. Um, I do believe it came from my upbringing, the creator, as well as those prayers that were being offered for me. So I wanted to inject that so that you, you would know that regardless of how you feel, if no one else is interceding for you, we are all the time. You continue, George, please. And, and Reb, I agree with what everyone has said because it's based on their experience. And what I mean by I may not need prayer at that time, that, doesn't, that does not mean prayer is alienated from the equation. It may just mean I need to process something out 
or if if it's if I'm on the reciprocal end of that, you tell me your situation, George, keep me in prayer. Okay, I'm gonna keep that individual in prayer. However, let's talk this out and let's discuss this out. So we can because when I'm on the reciprocal end, I want to know that because it is about your heart that I had an impact with that person. Suppose that suppose that, that person that I, don't want to enjoy it. Suppose that person doesn't want to talk about it. Well, Reverend Reverend Richard, that is a part that you have to respect. Two weeks Great. ago, yeah, my homeboy called. Me. Okay, Rev, my homeboy called me up. He said, George, I'm depressed. And I said, hey, well, what you depressed about? He said, I don't know. He said, but, then he didn't say but. He said, uh, I said, well, what do you want me to do for you? He said, just let me be. So for two weeks, I had no contact with him until he called me up and he said, hey, George, at least you can follow directions. So this is just my experience that in some cases, when Miss Evelyn stated, you know, I have had a horrible week or a tough week, my response was, well, what is it that we can do for you or what is it that I can do for you to make your situation better? If Miss Evelyn said, hey, George, pray for me, I would have prayed for her. So I'm not going to, if someone is, physically hungry, Reverend Richard, and the New Faith Foundation, <clears throat> I'm not the individual that's going to pray for them. I'm going to do something. Then I may incorporate the prayer. So it's, it, everyone's experience is their experience. I'm just mm -hmm. saying in some cases, okay, I, I, well, that's that. That's I agree all I with you, George. Yep. I agree with you. Some people, ev everyone's experience is their experience. And all I'm saying is when we are determined to embrace the entire essence of spirituality. There isn't a time when we do not need that energy to persevere, to process things, to, to see. If you are spiritual, spiritually hungry, and I ask you, what do you feel like you're missing? I don't know. Then we engage in conversation about something totally different, and it comes out. People don't necessarily know what they are looking for. All they know is that they are hurting. And it's not for me to judge whether or not I'm going to pray for them. I cannot do that. Even if they have hurt me, I cannot make a decision that I'm not going to do this because of that. Do you know why? Because I have made a choice to be prayer. I don't want to pray anymore. I'm it. I am prayer. I am what we, what we were talking about, the meditation. That's not something that's a part of me. That's who I am. Love is not a part of me. That's who I am. Forgiveness is not a part of me. That's who I am. And if that's who you are, then that's what is coming out of you. The energy that 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 oozes from your from 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 you is going to touch the heart, and and they are going to experience a presence from you that they need and didn't even know they needed it. I've had people to call me and say, "I just need to hear your voice." I've been in people present and they say, I was coming to ask you to pray for me, but I'm good now. 
But by the same token, I've had people to ask me to pray for them. So the question becomes, do you pray or are you prayer? Do you desire to pray? Do you desire to meditate? Or are you meditation or are you prayer? I'm not just I'm not just asking you, George. I'm asking everyone. What do you think you are? Do you know? I think you do. Since nobody's responding, Joe, but oh, go ahead, Audrey. I'm trying to get my thoughts together. <laughs> um, I'm just sitting here thinking about the fact that um, when people come to you and ask you to pray for them, what is it that they see or perceive or whatever in you that they feel comfortable asking you to do that? Um, but I think when, when we pray whether for them, whether or not we're using words or just meditating or whatever, I think that we have to find a certain balance within ourselves. Um, and that balance then allows us to, to, to connect with the creator. Um, so I think they probably see that balance in us because we, I, in my own case, I, 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 I don't know if I'm meditating all the time, but I'm, but I'm a thinker and I think about things a lot and I contemplate and I reflect and, that kind of thing, um, which I guess in, in a way is kind of meditation. But I think what it comes down to overall is that we find the balance, that place of balance within us so that we are able to connect with the creator. And um, sometimes it takes words, sometimes Sometimes you might feel like it takes words. Sometimes it might not take any words at all. Um, it's just finding the, getting to that place of balance. Anyway, that's what I feel. Okay. Excuse me, anyone else? Thank you, ma'am. George. Yeah, I think something, I'm sorry. No, Go ahead. no I was, uh, George Watson. Yeah, go ahead, George. Hey, it, Reb, and and to the other participants, I agree with what everyone is saying because it is your experience. Um, I just have come to the grips and some equations of life. Sometimes people just need to vent, and it is about after the the dialogue. Create a universe. I hope I aided this situation well, and we're not done with this dialogue. Please make me better for uh, the next dialogue that has to be completed. So everyone is talking about prayer, and everyone is talking about it from their experience. And I'm not going to when the young lady says. Her staff comes to her and she says, I got you. If that is what she's saying and her people know she got me, okay, cool. Um, that's just with me. Sometimes I've called you, Reverend Rich, and I say, Rev, ain't nothing you can do to fix this problem. I just need to vent. And you give me that. So with I'm prayer. Yeah, yeah, but Reb, that don't mean you didn't pray for me. 
Thank you. That don't mean you didn't pray for me okay. in the process of dialoguing. You probably said a prayer while we were dialoguing. You you said a prayer, and I know it was a prayer in there because you said all the correct things. So prayer is very personal to each one of us, and each one of us will maneuver in it differently. If the heart is okay. pure, I think we're gonna be all. I think we're gonna be okay. My way of of praying may not be y'all way of praying, vice versa. Thank it's you. a very person. Okay, then. But no, I agree. No, I, 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 wanted, I, I agree wanted with to, everybody. Uh, hold on a second. I just wanted to get uh, George in after you finish. Go ahead, George Watson. That that's it right there, Rev. Uh, okay. Okay. George right. out of Philly can go ahead. George. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, and George, and, and what you were saying in terms of you know your 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 uh, friend, um, in terms of him asking you for prayer. And when we look at it or how I see it is because of your presence, because of your aura, the person saw a reason to come to you to ask of that. And just by him asking and you were being the spirit that you are, the I am that you are, you know what I mean? Even if it was not words that was expressed, I think there's some um, spiritual connection where the person had that. Excuse me. I'm sorry, go ahead. I said, excuse me. Okay, yeah. You know, had that um, desire to reach out to you. And so sometimes, again, it may not necessarily be what you say it or what may have come out, but I think that there's still a presence about you that the person had enough, you know, confidence and desire, George, to ask of that. Now, how we do it, how is it expressed, as Audrey say, in terms of balance, but there's that, again, mighty I am presence that we all have. And when we do it from that spiritual perspective, then there's times that we don't even speak or we might not be together, but we are still connected in that way where I think prayers continually to go out or meditations continue to go out where it's has effect on us. And so I can appreciate what you said in terms of the person say, well, I just wanted to, you know, say something to you and um, wasn't expecting no answers back. But I think in your spirit, you know, George, you, you honored that by not calling him back. But at the same time, I, I want to believe in your spirit. You still had um, sensitivity, thoughts, or or um, a certain you know intuition about you in terms of how to deal with that. Hopefully, that resonates a little bit, uh, G. But I just want to share those thoughts. And and that's spot on, Mister George, out of Philly. Um, and we also need to give some attention to when a person comes to you there's a spiritual thing in there of they are coming to you so that there is some kind of energy there and some kind of intimacy there that the person knows that the person who has to process that they don't know that so it, like i say everyone's interpretation of prayer is spot on it, it, it's spot on um, and the way Mr. George said it out of Philly, as it relates to my situation, that was spot on. So, okay, every everybody cool, everybody yeah. cool on the stool with me. Yeah, and and George, let me say, you are blessed to be a blessing. Let me read something to you. You have found solace in counting your blessings and sharing those intangibles with others says meditation will allow you to connect with your ancestors as well, creating a space for you to acknowledge how far you have come on your path. And so you can conquer anything, okay, as long as the light from you forbearers remain inside you. So again, I think earlier Pastor was talking about the light. You are the light. You are the energy. You know what I mean? That can bring healing, can bring so I think that is, again, 
uh, something I just wanted to share, but I think we all are blessed to be a blessing. I just wanted to share those thoughts again. I, I want to put an addendum to that. <clears throat> you are the light, but you got to believe it. If you don't believe it, it's there. But it's just like having a bank account and don't have the pen number. It's there. But you can't benefit from it unless you believe it. Because when things happen and you don't believe it, then you don't even pay them any attention. And the changes, <clears throat> excuse me, the changes in you, you don't pay it any attention. When, <clears throat> when I think about how far we have come in terms of our thoughts, in terms of our spiritual awareness, I only can give thought to how far we have come when I look at where we were. And where we were and where we are now is not growth, it's awareness. Because if something is already there, you can't grow it. It's there, you're just not aware of it. So this whole thing that we are talking about with prayer, uh, there are times that your presence is more effective than your words, and you don't even know. There are times when only thing that a person needs or desires is for you to embrace them. That's it. I um. Well, I'm not going there. Go ahead. Any, any other questions or comments? So. I uh, hope that you have listened at all the expressions that have been made and have gleaned from them that the, the expressions and approaches are different. When I talked about being meditation, I said, let me talk about me. That's, that's how I feel. Arches are different. George is different. Teresa is different. Kath is different. And all of us are different in terms of how we express it, but the results are the same. Would you agree with that? The results are the same. That's what's important. The results. I, you don't I get results. Oh, what's yes, that? Sir. You, you don't get results if you don't believe it. Go ahead, y'all. I just said I agree with it, but oh. since, since you said, go ahead. I got one more uh, answer. You remember when you were saying your grandma knew that lady had died? Yeah. I had that same, you know, reality when uh, when I was in the hospital. Um, my cousin, Freddie, he came to me. I guess we was in the spirit. We were just talking about old things and and everything. And then he said, well, sorry, I got to go. I said, okay. And then my parents and my aunt and his mama came in my room and I heard them over there whispering, like me and you talking. And I said, I already know Fred is gone. And they looked at me like I was crazy. Out of, out of my head, how do I know that he died? During the time I was in the hospital, I said he already. I, I yeah, remember he, that he experience. Came. Yeah. 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 Go ahead, yeah. I just acknowledging that I remember that experience. Yeah, because I mean, it. I mean, it's just like me and everybody on this on this phone is talking, carrying on the conversation, like. You know, like we've been talking for years. And I mean, that's the conversation that we were having. 
and I knew it would have to be in the spirit. Yeah. But when he did, when he said, Charles, I got to go. And then when Paradigm came there, my aunt and all, and his, and his mama, they would tell we can't tell Charles, you know, that Freddie had passed because they thought it, it, it would be harm to me because I was still in this critical state. And I told them I already know that. And they looked at me funny. So mm -hmm. a lot of stuff everybody's talking on here, mm -hmm. I don't hear it, hear it and saw it. Well, Charles, most, yes, sir. People look, most people look at you funny when you say things like that because they're not accustomed oh. to it. And, and that's okay. See, we got to be okay with people who don't understand what you understand, that's okay. The worst thing that we can do to them is condemn what they believe or make them feel little or small because of what they said or how they said it. And we have to be okay with that. If we are not okay with that, the, the energy that uh, I think as Arjun was talking about where other people see it or, or experience it, they won't come to you because the same energy of you not being okay with what they are saying or what they believe, they're not coming to you because they feel that energy of discomfort. Just like we are in places and we are uncomfortable with the energy with, within that environment. Don't think for a moment that if your mindset is uh, where theirs is, they won't feel it. They will. They will. And, and, and another thing, it, this, this, man in the Bible, I, I don't know his name, he went to these people's house, he was one of God's prophets, he went to the people's house, and they were eating swine, he left from the place where they was eating, he went on top of the roof, and God had to talk to him and tell him, all that I made is good, even the swine that they was eating, and he, don't, don't, he disliked swine, and God yeah. had to remind him, that was Peter. That he need to go down and have the swine right along with them. Mm -hmm. That was Peter on the roof. Who went to that roof? Okay. Yeah. And that I think is in Acts. So anyway, um the spiritual message in that, what Charles just described, is this. I have prepared people. I have I have brought into existence humanity. And there are going to be some things that you're going to encounter when you are in the presence of humanity that you're going to have to swallow even though you don't want to. There are things that you're going to have to embrace for that moment to get you through. There are things that you're gonna hear that's not pleasant, but it's not, that does not necessarily mean that you are to speak or to correct someone. That's a, that's a huge spiritual message in that conversation that is um, attributed to Peter and the Creator. Does that make sense? That's our lives. Questions, comments? Well, well, one of the things I, I would like to add is that in prayer, um, in some cases, prayer can be kind of humorous. And what I mean by that is Several moons ago, Reverend Richard gave an example of how his mother or grandmother prayed that 
the phone bill is up under a hundred dollars. When the bill came, it was ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. I don't remember that. What was that again, Rip? I don't remember that. And so, I, in some cases, oh my bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh -uh. So, in some cases, prayer can be kind of humorous. Um, I do believe the creator has a humorous side because I have a humorous side. Our degrees are different. So in prayer with me, um, knowing when to seek prayer, knowing when to give prayer, and most of all, knowing how to pray. Um, and in some cases, George, may I say something to that? I'm gonna, uh, you can come yeah, back sure. in. The, you can come back in a moment. Um, knowing how to pray—that's a misnomer. You can't say that you got to know how to pray, and everybody pray different. Those two things don't mesh. Because if you got to know how to pray then that means there's a prescribed way to pray. And it is. And, and Rev, and, and Rev, I, yes, I appreciate your, I appreciate your candor. Um, my sister heard one of the lessons and she heard you say that once I meditate on something, I just leave it alone. My sister said, you know, I'm somewhat different. I believe in being persistent in my prayer and my due diligence. So, and what I mean by knowing how to pray, creator, give me a better paying job. Creator, give me a task on assignment that fulfills my every need. Those are two different kinds. Those are two different prayers. So, just knowing how how to pray with me now, with me. Um, just knowing how to pray. When I had the, the Ninja Turtle van, I prayed that, hey, universe, I need this vehicle to, to last, and I'm going to do my part in aiding it to last. Got away from that part of, whatever year that was, that's the kind of vehicle I need. Be grateful for what I have now and 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 just roll with it. So I well, agree with you, Reverend Richard. Okay. And I agree with everyone else. Thank um, you. I want to speak to the job thing. Because when when I talk to people about the job train a job change or being employed, getting employment altogether. My question is, do you believe that this position is for you? When I'm talking to people about the job, all I'm trying to do is build their confidence. And because if I can't build their confidence by talking to them, or raising questions with them and, and getting responses, then the law of attraction doesn't work. They have to believe it. And I have to get them to a place where they embrace uh, that, that I am going to be employed. There's no, there's no question about that. And when I was at a church, that was only paying me a hundred dollars a week. I didn't ask God to increase it. I just embraced the reality that that's where God had put me. Because at the same time that I accepted the pastorship at that particular church, there was another church offering me as well. And I talked to Reverend Hawkins about it. He said, you got to make a choice. What do you feel in your heart? And I told him I felt like 
through a uh, church that was offering me $100, I felt like that's who needed me the most and that's who I needed the most because I could learn from them. And that's where I went. So I didn't ask for an increase. But one Sunday morning, I had been there, but what, four or five months, maybe six. This person came to me and asked me when were we were having a meeting. And we had the church meeting, whenever it was. And that person made a, um, a motion for my salary to increase, and it did. And I had not been there that long. So what am I, what, what is the moral of what I'm saying? It's not about me getting you a job by praying with you or for you. It's about me helping you to trust what you know, to trust what you say you believe, to trust. And in some cases, do you trust God? Yes. Hold on to that. That kind of thing. And, and every one of you, to, to a person, if you have called me about a job and you say it, that um, I'm applying for this job, and what did I say? Don't worry about it. You got it. Why? I have to build your confidence. And if you're saying that I did it, no, I didn't. But it's okay for you to say that. Just like the oil didn't heal anybody. It was my confidence that healed them. Does that make sense? Yes. So anyway, um, I know it, the time is later than um, what I thought it was. So I'm finished as, as far as I know about the prayer. So I'm, Ron, you've been quiet here. You muted, Ron. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just listening. Uh, yeah, I, I I appreciate everything everyone said. I agree with what you said. I uh, do know that it's an individual thing. I think sometimes I overthink things. I get in my own head sometimes, but uh, yeah, I'll... Uh, Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, where are we? Is there is there any any other questions on this subject? Any other comments? Okay. Well, then it may be a good place to take a pause and uh, stop here for the evening. Okay. 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 You guys have a great week. Thanks again. And uh, look forward to next Saturday. All Stay right. Safe. You guys have a good night. Everybody. Thank you. All right. Good, good night, night everybody. Mm -hmm.